the biggest blockbuster trade has gone down here at the 2022 NBA trade deadline. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. That is Chase Sr. James Harden, Ben Simmons, the blockbuster trade has gone down, Chase. We'll get the full trade details here, but man, what a day here at the trade deadline. Fascinating. As early as last week, a couple weeks ago, it seemed as though this deal was going to be impossible because Philadelphia didn't have any leverage. But as we know, Daryl Morey running basketball operations now for Philadelphia, formerly with Houston, has always been very, very aggressive. And at the last minute, the Sixers had the leverage over the Brooklyn Nets, and frankly, I think Philadelphia wins this deal because they get James Harden to pair up with Joel Embiid, that two-man game, and them as a duo makes them immediate factors in the Eastern Conference. Yesterday, they, they were not that because really they were just a fun team. So Joel Embiid, the front runner for MVP, now has the horsepower and the firepower offensively to get the most legit co-star he has ever had throughout his NBA career. And why I think Philadelphia wins this trade, they do not send away Tyrese Maxey, who to me is a blossoming young superstar at the point guard spot, and they don't lose one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA in Matisse Thibel. Now to lose Seth Curry, a career 40 plus percent three point shooter, is a big loss for Philadelphia, but the big component of this deal you maximize Joel Embiid's prime, and you team him up with James Harden, and James Harden has always been the apple of Daryl Morey's eye. He got him once again. Yeah, and here are the full trade details on screen for you guys. So who won the trade? Simple question. Type BKN for the Brooklyn Nets. Types uh, PHI for the Philadelphia 76ers. Get your votes in. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. Who won this blockbuster trade between Philadelphia and Brooklyn? Now, Chase said that Philadelphia won the trade. I think so, too. Look, Seth Curry is a valuable piece. I get that. But I'd rather trade him as he's around 30 years old and keep Tyrese Maxey and Matisse Thibel, two guys that could be a part of this franchise for the next 10 years. And at the end of the day, the fact that you get to unload Ben Simmons and not waste a year of Embiid, that's critical to me. He's having a career year. This probably isn't a guy that's going to play pushing toward 40 years old and Joel Embiid. He's a big with an injury history. Yep. you got to try and win every single year while you can, Chase. Getting James Harden helps you do that. It does. And, of course, I have concerns about James Harden. He was unhappy in Houston. He forced a trade. He was unhappy in Brooklyn. He forced a trade. And if it doesn't work out in Philadelphia, he has an opportunity to opt out of his contract after this year yep. and become a free agent. Also, if he decides to sign a long-term deal with Philadelphia, you obviously have concerns concerns about how he ages because James Harden has never been in the peakest form in terms of his shape and his numbers this year are down and the injury issues for a guy who really was such a durable player for so long are starting to accumulate with the hamstring issues the last two years but look James Harden is one of the best offensive threats that we have ever seen the two-man game the pick and pop the pick and roll and James Harden as a, a, a passer you team him up with Joel Embiid, and that's a really scary tandem. Now, so far this year, Harden averaging 22.5 points per game, 10 dimes, almost 8 rebounds. He's always been really good as a triple-double threat. Yep. You take a look at the field goal percentage. It's only at 41.5 right now, 33% from beyond the arc. But look, the pressure isn't going to be on him offensively like it was in Houston and at times with the Brooklyn Nets because Joel Embiid is having a marvelous campaign. He leads the NBA in scoring. He's a terrific defensive player as well. And to be able to have a starting five now of, let's say, Tyrese Maxey at the one, James Harden at the two, Matisse Thibel at the three, Tobias Harris at the four, and Joel Embiid at the five makes this team fascinating. Losing Seth Curry and his shooting ability will certainly hurt. There are also picks going to Brooklyn in this deal as well, but you're trying to maximize the prime for Joel Embiid right now, and by doing this trade, the Sixers are able to do that. Before we get to the net side of this, real quick, I'll counter the starting five thing. Sure, like one, two, whatever. Harden's the primary point guard. Yeah. In this Maxi can play off Maxie ball if he wants or some, run that second unit. Yeah, Maxi can play some point if Harden's taking a break, but this is going to be a Harden and Embiid two man game. Yeah. And the other guys play off that. That is, uh, I mean, he's have, averaging over 10 assists a game this year. He's basically become a point guard over the last several years. We'll get to the net side of this deal momentarily as well as Ben Simmons is the big piece heading to Brooklyn. 
This is why you subscribe. I don't think anyone does what we do here at uh, Chat Sports and on YouTube. No one does it better. We went live three hours before the deadline, broke down some of the smaller trades, and we were live breaking this one down before anyone else. Subscribe, breaking news, trade deadline coverage. We got you guys covered. NBA news and rumors throughout the whole calendar year. Plus, if you're an NFL fan, we have NFL coverage as well. It's free. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Do not miss any of our coverage here at Chat Sports. Now, obviously, Chase, there is the Simmons side of this as of Philadelphia gets to unload him. Now, you kind of look at this for, for Brooklyn side, right? Like, I think they had no choice here but to trade Harden. I think he went to management and was like, I'm not re signing here. I'm giving you a chance to trade me because I will not re sign. So they decide to do that. So I guess Harden deserves a little credit for that. Uh, but now, Simmons gets to really have an opportunity at redemption because say he gets in there, Durant gets healthy, he's re-engaged and they make a run, an opportunity to reset his image with the Brooklyn Nets. No doubt about it. And look, the second round flame out for Ben Simmons was really ugly. He passed up on the dunk, which was a head scratching move and remains one of the biggest mysteries that we've ever seen in NBA history. He shot around 33% from the free throw line. He has never shown a willingness to grow his offensive arsenal and shoot the basketball and put the necessary work in to grow that aspect of his game like a player like Giannis or maybe a Jalen Brown. What has Ben Simmons always been though? a very, very good player who's still young at yep. 24, 25 years old. He's controllable in that contract, and I actually really like the fit with him going to the Brooklyn Nets for a bevy of reasons. If he doesn't want to shoot the basketball, that's fine. He's playing alongside Kevin Durant, who's a walking bucket and the best player in the NBA when healthy. If the vaccination status figures out nicely for Brooklyn, Kyrie Irving plays, sure. then Ben Simmons can play off ball. If Kyrie can't play, Ben Simmons can play point guard. Yes, Simmons at times is a liability late in games because he doesn't shoot, isn't willing to shoot, and can't shoot from the free throw line, but... He can play down low in the dunker spot and give you an elite passer. And I never bought in to the fact that Ben Simmons' value was tanked and as low as what people were making it out to be. In my opinion, he's the best defender in the NBA. He's a three-time All-Star and he's a two-time All-NBA player who can guard all five positions on the floor. He's 6'10", 6'11", 240 pounds and has elite passing ability on the fast break and in the half court. He fits very well on Brooklyn, and honestly, it makes the Nets very interesting as well. Let's talk about the cap. Uh, 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 what's the word? Cap. Uh, Aspect, and element. Ramifications. Ramifications. All God. those words apply. Couldn't think of the word. It's okay. We've been live for several hours. Bobby now. Marks is the expert when it comes down to the ESPN. He has it all breaking down. Ramifications. I'm never going to live that one down. Simmons is under contract, 33 million, 35, 37, 40 over the next several years. 15% trade bonus that is uh, voided in this deal, so I'm guessing he signed off on that. Uh, Curry at 8.2 and 8.5. He is extension eligible in the offseason. Drummond expiring, uh, expiring vet minimum of 1.5 in savings. Uh, Brooklyn will need to clear a roster spot. So some of the uh, salary cap implications. More stuff on uh, that, too. Right there from Bobby Marks and uh, more Bird command. rights carry in the trade for Harden. Eligible to sign a five-year $269 million contract Ooh. with Philadelphia if he declines his $47.4 million contract. There would be a $61.7 million cap hit in year five based on a full Ooh. max. Well, so a lot of financial up. ramifications there, Harrison. Well, you know what I always I say you, when, you're a when you're always, yes, when you're always a contender, <laughs> you worry about later, later. Yep. Yeah, you try to win now. Yep. That is certainly uh, what uh, Philadelphia is trying to do. And, uh, you know, Brooklyn as well, because it was not going to work with James Harden. So these are the trade details. Some of the minor pieces to quickly discuss. Paul Millsap coming. We'll see if he stays with Philly. I think he could be a buyout candidate. We'll see how the Sixers view him. Uh, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond head over to Brooklyn. And, of course, the Nets also get two first-round picks. I wonder if the Nets use a couple, one or two of those first, to maybe add another – depth piece before the deadline is over here in the next hour and a half or so. Yeah, they could be because there was a report from Jake Fisher that if they got Matisse Thybul, they were making calls across the NBA yes. to other teams to inquire about Matisse Thybul in hopes they could get something additional back. Now, I'm just looking at a new Woj tweet. The Nets will get the Sixers 2022 first round pick unprotected with a right to defer until 2023 and a 2027 first round pick protected 1 to 8. The 2027 pick would roll over to 2028 protected 1 to 8 again. The pick turns into two second rounders and $2 million in 2029 and who the hell knows what's going to be happening in seven years. 
what we know right now, this trade, monster implications across the NBA. 2029, if that was a rookie in 2029, that would be someone who is currently... Is LeBron still going to be playing? That would be someone who's currently 11 years old. So uh, that's how crazy these trade gets. All right, bigger threat moving forward. Type PHI for the 76ers. Type BKN for the Brooklyn Nets. Get your votes in and let us know down in the comments.